All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Athena pack which is being made by forum user Ganinian. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build the Athena rocket. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it was a rocket designed by Lockheed back in the 90s. It was pretty short-lived. They only did seven missions, I think, and I believe believe two of them failed, but if memory serves, it was actually the first rocket to reach orbit from the Kodiak launch facility? Don't quote me on that though, I may be wrong. Go check Wikipedia. But let's jump right on into the VAB and have a look at what all this does give us. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then turn on our mod filter so we just have the starshine industry showing, and you'll notice we have no command pod for this one. That is because the Athena is purely a launch system uh, that never really had its own sort of, uh, well, command pod or anything. It was meant for launching other kinds of satellite payloads, etc. And we also don't have anything in fuel tanks because the Athena was all solid rocket engines, and that, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So we start, of course, in the engine category, where we have just three, which <laughs> is a nice change of pace after uh, the last episode. Oh boy, that SpaceX pack was big. But yes, the first engine we have here is the Athena Orbital Adjustment Module, which is, of course, designed to help, you know, maneuver when you are in orbit with your payload, and it is a a lovely system of RCS engines and thrusters that of course are monopropellant based. Now the engine itself does have a maximum thrust of 30 kilonewtons and an ISP of 250. Again does use monopropellant, it does have its own built-in decoupler and of course it is also RCS rather than just a thruster system and also holds a 200 electric charge and 650 monopropellant and is a very well made made model here. I do love the look of this thing. It is a pretty darn cool. And of course we have the downward RCS thrusters, which of course are what is activated by the engine, and then all of them can be used, of course, for the RCS purposes. Very nice little system, so let's pop that off, and zoom out a bit to have a look at the Caster 120 solid fuel booster. Now this is the main engine of the Athena system, and I believe there were two variants of the Athena, one that just used one of these, and one that had two for larger payloads. And, uh, yeah, it has its own built-in decoupler. It is, of course, solid rocket fuel, which has a maximum thrust of 615 kilonewtons, with an engine ISP max of 210. It does have a gimbling range of 2 degrees, which is quite nice for a solid rocket booster, and holds in total 2,450 50 solid fuel, which is quite cool. I actually really do like these engines. They are fun boosters. And the final one we have is the Orbis 21D solid fuel booster, which is sort of the uh, final stage. You know, you use these to get really high up, and then this to sort of circularize your orbit is meant to be the sort of purpose. And it is, of course, a solid fuel booster as well, with a max thrust of 155 kilo Newtons, engine ISP max of 190, it does have a 540 solid fuel, and overall is, well, as the name suggests, but it's kind of Orbis, or <laughs> Bulbus, I was going to say, but the name, you know, it works. Now, we have nothing in command and control, nothing in structural. We do have two things in coupling, as you can see here, the first of which is the Athena Interstage, which is a decoupler that actually, if I bring back that uh, Orbis engine, is meant to go sort of, if I can click it again, my god, Kerbal Space Program, why do you never cooperate? You know what? I'm just going to grab a new one. Oh, well. And is meant to go there to cover the actual engine of the Orbis, which is quite useful. We then have the Athena payload mount, which goes over the uh, orbital unit and is, of course, a decoupler for your actual payload. And you'll notice the uh, much higher attachment point there, which is for the custom fairing, which is down 
in aerodynamics, nothing in payload for us to look at. And the Athena fairing is quite nice. Now we just pop it on right there. And it's quite interesting because this is the only part. You know, a lot of times you'll have fairings that are either two pieces, half and half, or just one that you spin around. This though is one singular piece and it looks half open here in the VAB, but once you head out to the launch pad, this section closes itself off. So that is something to remember. You don't have to take another of these and flip it around. You are good to go. You just need to build whatever you need to right inside, which is wonderful. And after that, I believe that is the last part. Let's just double check to make sure I don't forget something. And yes, there we go. That is it for this uh, parts pack. So let us take a look at uh, one of the two rockets that they did include with this mod so you can have a nice pre-built. Let's actually look at the Athena 2 first off. Now this is the larger version for heavier payloads, which uh, as I did mention has a two of the caster 120s. So you can get into a pretty good high orbit with a small payload or of course you know get a big payload into a smaller orbit a very nice overall but let's actually take out the Athena one just cuz well it'll be perfect for showing off the whole system now we do actually have to go and turn back on squad parts and grab ourselves some form of command pod as I did mention this has none so let's just grab a probobodyne and you know what actually let's put a Kerbal in this thing there we go and as you can see that actually is quite a bit of room that you can have there in the payload section quite nice and roomy so let us go to a launch this Athena one oh I forgot to put a Kerbal in it yeah that would generally help Jebediah there we go perfect now we can launch oh wonderful and so there we are as you can see the whole fairing has in closed itself now so again you don't have to worry about that it just shows as half a fairing in the VAB so let us turn on SAS throttle this bit well actually we don't need a throttle it's a solid rocket booster so why am I doing that and just hit space bar in actually a moment after I do get a good look at this thing there we go gotta <laughs> Gotta have that right image for the thumbnail. Perfect. Our lovely Athena rocket. The Athena 1 version with just the single caster 120 engine. Beautiful. Reset the camera. Prepare for launch. And 3, 2, 1, go. There we are. Now the caster isn't exactly have the most oomph of any solid rocket booster, but it does have a good deal of power. And with two of these on the Athena 2, you can very easily get into orbit. Now you could probably get into orbit with this thing, the Athena 1, but I personally, just because I'm awful at flying, I've had a few issues with it, but you probably could overall. I, I think my biggest issue that I've been having with this so far is with the Orbis, because it doesn't have a gimbling on it like the caster does. It's a little bit harder to control, so if you don't have a good, uh, uh, good SAS system on it, you might have a bit of difficulty. And so that, that seems to be what usually causes my rockets to not do quite so well. But as you can see, we're getting pretty high up in altitude here just with this singular engine. And had we actually more properly flown this in a uh, arc, we probably would have actually gotten it into orbit. But I'm just trying to show it off, so let's drop the caster and ignite the Orbis. There we are, beautiful little engine. And yeah, we could easily probably get this into orbit if you piloted it correctly, as we are already over a hundred thousand meters. So a very nice little whole system. I have really been enjoying it, and it is a nice little set of parts. Not exactly one of those rockets that's extraordinarily well known. As I said, they only ever launched seven of them, and only five of them actually, you know, worked. But it's a very good little system, got some great new solid rocket boosters that you could throw onto any ship you're designing. And I actually really do like, I think my favorite part is probably the orbital adjustment module. It's, it's a pretty good little set of uh, RCS engines and a lovely RCS thruster that of course we activate here. So let's actually drop that and, oh, the fairings, haha, <laughs> and drop the Orbis and 
There we are, throttle up our RCS engine, which we can of course throttle down there from those uh, downward facing RCS ports. And if we turn on RCS itself, well, there we go. We can control it just like any other RCS thing in the game. And it is a pretty cool little system. I actually do think this is probably one of my favorite parts of this. That and the caster. The caster is a good solid rocket booster. But yeah, that is uh, gonna be it actually for this episode. Not really much else we could talk about. A very cool system, some very cool parts, and overall just some nice additions to the game. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself, and I would definitely recommend you do, you can take a look at the link in the description description as per usual but that is going to be it for this episode my friends i hope you have enjoyed and of course that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one and i forgot we had one more decoupling there we go later folks